Well, g'day there, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me on this Monday afternoon market recap. This is the chart of the S&P 500. If you've been following along publicly on this YouTube channel, you will understand really what's at stake for not only the S&P 500, but the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ up and around these current areas that we are trading, really bouncing back on up into. In my opinion, this is really going to be uh, an inflection point on the markets whereby at least we are going to have a sense of truth as to where market direction and price is going to move over the next six months at an absolute minimum. There's a plethora of overhead resistance where we are currently bouncing up on into. And let me just run through some of this overhead resistance beginning with the S&P 500. First of all, all right, first of all, we have actually retraced or at least reclaimed a fair portion of right the sell-off which began at the midpoint of February of 2020, which ultimately bottomed down here on, on March 23. We have come back on up. Um, we've actually overshoot, albeit marginally, that 50% Fibonacci retracement area. The 61.8% retracement area is still a little bit above where we are currently trading at. Today, we closed at 2,823 points. I'll actually show you this on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ. So just bear with me a couple of moments. But before I do, just wanted to point out, obviously, right, along and especially over the past one and a half weeks, right, if you're just looking at the individual candlesticks here, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. First of all, as at Monday's session, as at today, we do have, right, that of a shooting star candlestick. We actually closed down, we traded up, we couldn't actually break back above uh, the session of Friday last week, and we traded down towards the end of the session. We actually closed just off the lows. This is what is presenting. That of a shooting star candlestick, this in and of itself is an early reversal signal. It's happening right at the correct location on the chart, so to speak, up and around a credible area of resistance. And again, if you take into consideration some of the doji candlesticks, some of the spinning top candlesticks, and even these two white candlesticks that essentially just exhaust themselves really immediately after initial gap up, we're really not seeing any continued follow through, right? Blended with, right, hangman candlesticks, another doji candlestick, and this rather ominous bearish counting it uh, bearish counter attack candlestick over here this is going back of course to the 7th of april it makes me believe that again this price activity that we that we're actually seeing sort of construct itself through the candlestick formation is not all that bullish it's a little bit of a warning signal in and of itself if i show you this on the longer term uh, 200 and 100 day simple moving averages you can see that they're still coming back on up or at least they're moving sideways just above the psychological area of 3000 uh, points on the S&P 500. When I show you this on the declining exponential moving averages, you can see that we're barely just holding above that 50-day exponential moving average. This is where it really gets concerning because when you look at the oscillators on the daily time frame, just pay attention to how overbought we are. In fact, what we have achieved more recently is that the signal line on the MACD, it's actually pushed just above the neutral point. However, you can already see the curvature of the histogram which is beginning to decelerate in combination with a lot of these flimsy individual candlesticks that we have seen continuously build over the past one and a half weeks. Pay attention to this. If we get a sudden shock and a long day dark Morabozu candlestick, and if we move beyond or below the infliction point on my chart of 2,699 points, things are going to turn very ugly very quickly. I'm still holding the very strong opinion that once this does essentially exhaust itself, we're not only going to come back down to say 2,550 to close this open window, but uh, more importantly for people up here who may be considering actually buying this bounce, there's a higher probability that we're going to come all the way back down to the March 23rd lows and overshoot this all the way back down here at 2,325 points. Historically speaking, what you can do is not only pay attention to the 50, right, EMA, what you can do in addition is pay attention to the 50 SMA, which is the simple moving average. And you can look at this in combination with the 200 day simple moving average as well. This is what we call a death cross where we see the 50 cross the 200. Uh, but more importantly, if you look back again, historically, uh, again, this is going to be a little bit different to the exponentially weighted, right? Moving average is going to be a smooth average. Okay, so it's not really front weighted as is the exponentially weighted um, moving average. But again, you can see that on the uh, S&P uh, 500, we've actually held above it, right? Or closed above it on Friday last week. We tried to push back above this area as at today's session. And this is where we're starting to see that shooting star candlestick set up. Now, if I jump on over into the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I mean, I've actually lost some of these Fibonacci uh, support and resistance areas. Let me just draw these on for you again, because I can show you exactly where they're showing up at this particular point in time. You can see here, if you use this, or at least the beginning of the sell wave down to the conclusion of 
All right, the sell wave, which was the first crash. You can see if you're paying attention to these Fibonacci retracement areas, we come back all the way back and up to the 0.5, which is 50% of this sell wave. And again, we're sort of stuck in the mud. And if you sort of look outward again, going back to this bearish counter attack, largely, I mean, although we have been as a net positive grinding higher, this has come as that oscillator on the daily time frame is really pushing back up into extreme overbought settings. Mixed with today's candlestick, it is a little bit different to that of a shooting star candle that we have on the S&P 500. This is really almost a one black crow. It is a very bearish candlestick. We've actually closed this first window, but again, if you look below the current window and you can see where our trap door is on the market at 22,932, you can still see that we have these open windows which still need to be filled and closed at an absolute minimum on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In fact, the, the bottom uh, window itself is coming in again below that 19,000, right? Psychological round number. It's far below, obviously, that 20,000 psychological round number. We're trading all the way back on up here at 23,650. If I show you the same metrics as well, you can see that we're getting across as the 100 moves below the 200 simple day moving average. It's about to happen, of course, on the S&P 500 as well. If we bring up the exponential moving averages, you can see a little bit of a rejection at the declining 50. This is the EMA, all right? So make the distinction, the very clear distinction between the exponentially weighted moving average and of course the simple, right? Moving averages, you can see here that we are extremely overbought. When I go back out into the macro time frame of these indicators, again, you can see the divergence, which is just continuing to form as the market itself largely now is moving sideways in a rectangular pattern and it's barely holding on to this decelerating fan line. So if we do crack this at some point in the near future, hold on because things are going to get uh, a little bit crazy. If you think the market has been obviously volatile for the time bearing, uh, for the over, I guess, recent history anyway, uh, you can very easily see this tick back on up as the VIX, uh, as the VIX, pardon me, accelerates off from its rising 50-day smooth moving average as well. Again, if I show you this on the simple moving average, mixed with the 200-day, we got the cross back in the month of March. You can see, that we're turning down prior to actually hitting the 50 smooth moving average. This is a very bearish signal. You're seeing it on the S&P 500 very nicely. You're seeing it on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The one outlier at this particular time is the NASDAQ. However, when you look at the individual candlestick again, this isn't um, not only that of a shooting star candlestick, it is very similar to that of what we call a gravestone doji. All right, so we've had a gravestone doji during today's session on Friday. As of last week, we have a hangman candlestick. And again, going back to Thursday, we've got a pseudo, right? Spinning top slash hangman candlestick as well. So the past three sessions, as the NASDAQ as a whole is still, albeit um, very marginally pushed and continue to push to the upside, we're seeing a bunch of early reversal candlestick signals not only showing up at the 0.5 or just above it, but really at that 0.618 Fibonacci retracement area, which is sitting at 8,705 points. So again, we've pretty much tagged it for the last two sessions, that being Friday and of course during today's session, mixed with right price action, which is at this particular point holding above the simples, however, or sorry, the exponentials, but if you look again at the daily um, oscillators over here, you can see again, the curvature of the histogram is starting to roll, right? We've exceeded the midpoint, which is interesting. The RSI is potentially starting to turn. You cannot really get all that much more overbought in this type of setting if, in fact, this is going to produce a legitimate right um, right shoulder, okay? That's just the reality of this. If this is going to turn out to be some form of a lower high, I was going to write the initials LH, but I'll just put RS for right shoulder just here um, against, of course, the February peak, okay? We're in a general vicinity as to where we should see this begin, of course, to play out. The ADX likes this move, which is interesting. We're starting to pull away from the top band. But again, what we've just achieved, although this is a bit of a lagging signal, is the 50 crossing below the 200 day. We've got price action above, obviously, both of those at this particular point. However, we still have these open windows. If you've been following me here on YouTube for, I know, I guess any any period of, of, of time, you'll understand just how important open windows are, especially during that of volatile periods because right oftentimes they will close again as the euphoria again begins to fade i think we've sort of reached peak euphoria at this particular point oil prices today insanity absolute insanity but as that begins to fade and weigh down mixed with the again the plethora of economic data that came in last week and again even started off this uh this week in particular very very weak today is it monday Right, I think we are going to see that natural turning point, whether or not it plays out very sharply or whether it's more of an enduring sort of rounding top, what we call a dumpling top, uh, time will tell. However, right, the candlesticks are really suggesting that although right, we're seeing again the markets creep on up, 
there are a lot of warning signals entangled within the construction of these individual candlesticks. Pay attention on the S&P 500, okay, to that declining 50 simple moving average. Generally, what I like to do, of course, is play the monthly chart and have a look at the exponential moving averages where the 10 and also the 20, right, exponentially weighted uh, moving averages are. Historically, once you see the 10 cross the 20, if in fact that does occur, you are definitively at that point mixed with everything else in that of a bear market. There's no doubt whatsoever that unfortunately we've moved into a recessionary period that should mark the top, obviously, of this macro expansion, which has been in effect since 2009. And as such, these are the games that are being played, right? Right above the neckline, right at potentially, right? That right shoulder slash left, oh, sorry, lower high, which is somewhere going to come in. You can already see the retest of the 10, in fact, or the 20 exponential moving average, right? During the month, um, more or less play out maybe over the coming weeks, if not uh, a month or so into the future. So be mindful of that. I know there's a lot of negative news out there, but equally as much, there are still a lot of people stepping up to buy the dip, right? There's a big crowd of people who are still jumping into the market, trying to buy assets at their first wave of the sell-off lows. Unfortunately, at this particular time, right, I'm still under the impression very strongly that we are at an absolute minimum going to come back to retest these March 23rd lows. So again, a big warning signal as at Monday session, it doesn't necessarily mean we are going to see the roll and the infliction point tagged. We still have, of course, a little bit of a gauntlet to run if these markets want to push back on up into the longer term simple moving averages. There are no guarantees whatsoever that this is going to play out. And again, what I've been talking to people about, right, individually and also as a group is to really assess the market through a risk and also reward perspective, okay? Because you've actually, I mean, if you quantify, of course, your risk being the top of, at this particular point, the 100-day simple moving average on the S&P 500, if you just calculate some of the reward figures, uh, the actual risk-reward ratio itself is rather outrageous at this particular point. And again, I'd still say the minority of people, right, are constructively looking at these charts and looking at them for what they are, and that is, of course, producing that of the first lower high in the right shoulder of this macro topping pattern. Until we see the markets move above these simple moving averages, hold and continue above and get get above also that 10 uh, exponentially weighted moving average on the monthly chart of the S&P 500, I'm still going to be looking at this market, I think naturally, rather bearishly, okay, rather bearishly at this particular point. Um, IBM reported earnings today. Uh, after hours, it is down um, a little bit at this particular point. We're going to have to keep a, uh, you know, a finger on the pulse of that particular stock. Apple's just holding up, um, albeit right, just marginally. Amazon's coming back to retest those highs that it produced on Thursday as of last week. We have another shooting star candlestick. An interesting signal there on Amazon. Boeing Airlines is still largely moving sideways. We've got a shooting star on Baidu as well. Caterpillar seems to be back testing critical support as new resistance. So again, I would not be jumping into new longs on Caterpillar whatsoever. COP, which is patiently waiting around that 3012 entry point on that particular stock, a little bounce today. However, really just moving absolutely nowhere. We've got Disney still coiled, moving sideways. A lot of these individual stocks, by the way, are obviously reporting or moving into their Q1 um, earnings season as well. So again, we have to sort of navigate that over the next one to two, if not three weeks for some of these individual companies. That's why, again, a lot of, I guess, my focus and attention is really being given to the actual market indices at this particular point. I think that's really where the big sort of uh, the cherry is, so to speak, once this market really starts to get moving. I've just, you know, very briefly updated you on IBM. It's down after hours based on that report. Microsoft is still pushing back on up. It's actually closed this open window, reported about this over the weekend. A little bit of a sort of a bearish candlestick, down $3.50 today. But again, no macro reversal signal at this particular point. We still have a bunch of open windows that need to be closed on Microsoft. And again, one of the outliers or the disruptors, so to speak, of this market cycle, the major beneficiaries outside of Amazon is Netflix. Netflix, again, very similar to Amazon, is pushing back on up into the candlestick of Thursday as of last week. Um, personally, I'm not going to jump on board with any of these bullish breakouts. The reason for that is because the markets themselves, there is a tremendous amount of risk up and around these areas. I know it may feel like there's no chance, for instance, that the Fed won't allow these markets to drop or that you know potentially the market should have dropped already if they were going to. You're going to be very surprised when this takes a turn, right? It can just sort of linger here indefinitely, but when collectively it makes that turn, it'll happen relatively quickly. So again, I assume what's happening is a lot of people are jumping into this market, right? As long as the prices are sort of elevated around this current print, um, the higher the price gets, obviously, more and more people want to jump back in, into it. 
However, the institutions, institutions, pardon me, are looking to sell right around these critical areas, these Fibonacci retracement areas, these longer term monthly, right, exponentially weighted uh, moving averages, and also the longer term, even the 400 day, right, simple moving average mixed with the 200 day simple moving average and on the S&P 500, the declining 50 day simple moving average as well. A lot of these signals, right, we are pretty much in, of course, the red rectangular box of danger. That is exactly where we are on the charts on the S&P 500, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the NASDAQ itself, which is the strongest of the three markets at this particular point, is still struggling to get back above only the 61.8% retracement of this first wave of this sell-off. You tell me if things are getting better. Um, objectively, I don't think they are. I mean, we're not out of the, the lockdowns um, at this particular point. And uh, there's still going to be a lag effect, a very long lag effect. Um, around the world, not only in the US, but right around the world as well, unfortunately. This is going to have huge consequences, obviously, on the, on the demand side at the moment, but also the supply side too, all right? There's a an oversupply, and now there's a shock to demand. It's a double whammy. I cannot see these markets at this particular point again with, unfortunately, right over 20 million initial, initial claims, pardon me, filed over the past four weeks or so. I, I, I just cannot see these markets reclaiming these all-time highs anytime soon. All right, not until at least we come back down to retest these lows at an absolute minimum, which may set up some form of a broader foundation. Okay, we'll obviously move with that. But again, there's a lot of danger at this particular point wanting to step up and to buy the FOMO effect. And really my responsibility to you, as it has been throughout the entirety of this bounce, is just to warn you uh, that those people, in my opinion, who are doing uh, just that, they're going to be caught out uh, relatively soon. And it's going to become right quite painful for those people who are just jumping in a little bit too prematurely right on the first wave of this sell down. All right, so I'll leave it at that, everyone. I uh, hope, of course, you are staying healthy, you're staying safe, you're looking out uh, for yourself, your family, your neighbors, people in the community too. You're doing your part uh, during these times of lockdown. I hope we do, quite, of course, part of me move beyond this relatively quickly. Um, and also, of course, I wish you a, a nice evening too. I'll be back with you later in the week for some more market addresses. If you have any questions whatsoever, please email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. All the best, everyone. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading.